like Jesus, to be like Jesus. you all in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord once more, knowing that it is not of any good that I have done, but it is because of his grace and his mercy. Bless the Lord. The theme for today, hallelujah, the just shall live by faith. Bless the Lord. This theme, you know, for such a season as this, it is so relatable. Bless the Lord Jesus, because as we go through daily, bless the Lord Jesus, we need faith. But one thing I want to tell you, young people, that in faith does not come over time. Bless the Lord. It is something that requires work. Bless the Lord Jesus. Therefore, that is why the Bible said that we must think on the things that are pure and on the things that are just and on the things that are holy. Bless the Lord Jesus. Just like how we need food to survive that's how the holy spirit that lives within us need to survive and that is why we need to feed it bless the lord jesus and we also need to stay connected with god bless the lord and how can we stay connected with god we have to feed this spirit praise the lord praise the lord jesus bless the lord praise him bless the lord praise the lord praise the lord Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord Jesus. And also, that is why the Bible says that the physical man cannot spiritually discern the things of God. Bless the Lord. So in order for us to actually endure to the end and whatever hardship comes, we are able to stand against the wise of the enemy. We should, bless the Lord Jesus, feed our spiritual man. Bless the Lord Jesus. Not saying that you're not going to have doubts sometimes, young people. Bless the Lord. Because I remember in Proverbs 24, bless the Lord Jesus, verse 17, it says that the just man, he falls seven times. But the thing about it is that he, he arises. Bless the Lord. So I'm encouraging each and every one of us this morning. You know, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Just stand knowing that our God is able and just to keep us while we traverse on this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, hallelujah. Let us just continue to worship God, hallelujah. Praise him, hallelujah, and thank him for that encouragement to our souls, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise him, praise him, hallelujah. Praise him, I'll now be calling upon Sister Tudy Blackstock, praise him. To be to do our official welcome and greetings in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Your excellent Jesus, your excellent, your excellent in all the earth. Your, your excellent, excellent Jesus, your excellent. Jesus, your excellent. Your excellent in all the earth. And if the people don't want to praise you, your excellent in all.
Hallelujah. You're excellent, Jesus. Excellent in all the earth. Today is Youth Sunday, and we are all happy to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. I want to extend greetings this morning to our pastor, Pastor A.R. Thomas, his wife, Lady Thomas, and the rest of his family, Missionary Coburn, Missionary Sylvester, Missionary Green, Missionary Riley, our evangelist, Evangelist Gardner, Evangelist Noland, Evangelist Walters, Deaconess Wilshire, our youth director, Brother Blockstock, Youth President, Sister McClacken, Vice President, Sister Robinson, our moderator for today, Sister Naomi Miller, our choir, musicians, tech team, and all the lovely saints, greetings to you all in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. And we Amen. have all the right to give him praise this Hallelujah. morning because praise he has Jesus. done so much for us and we are grateful. Now, I want to welcome on behalf of Holiness Temple Shiloh Apostolic Church and our pastor and all the other saints, just want to welcome everybody out this morning. Is there any first time visitor with us today? No, any repeat visitor? Okay. All right, great. So we welcome you all this morning. Shall we praise the Lord? All right. Now, these are our, first of all, apologies for Sister Sewell, Sister Spready, Sister Shanavan Davis. Uh, today with us, we have a veteran who is celebrating her birthday today. Sister James, just stand and let us all give her birthday greeting. Can we all just sing, wish her birthday this morning? We're going to sing the song, Happy Birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Sister James. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Sister James. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Sister James. Happy birthday. And throughout the rest of the day, you can continue to, you know, wish her a happy birthday and bear up in prayer. Okay, some announcements for us to bear in mind for this week. So, this Tuesday night, April 9th, we will have our time management session. And this will be done by Brother Blockstock, presenter. This will be at 7 p.m. So that's 7 p.m. this coming Tuesday night, Tuesday night, April 9th. So we are inviting you all out to come on out and come and get something in your soul. I mean, we all can do well with some time management advice. All right? I know a lot of us, we are struggling in that department. So anything we can come out and get from this session, that would be good. No, just reminding you of our rally, rally in the city. And this will be April 28, 2024 at 6 p.m. Let me hear you say rally. 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 All right, and I know we are all ready for that, and the groups are still working. And with that said, Group Elisha will be selling today, so we are asking you all to support, support, spend up all the money, don't go home back with it. And uh, Group Elisha is also doing a cookout sale on April 17th, 2024. That's April 17th, 2024, so bear that in mind. Now, street meeting. Street meeting will be held on Sunday, April 14th. 
that's next two weeks Sunday at 6 p.m. And uh, the location for this will be at Bees Gully. That's at St. Jago Meadows side, if you are familiar with the area. Gardens, rather, right? So that's Bees Gully Street Meeting, April 14th at 6 p.m. So we are inviting you all to come out, support, and let us go out there and evangelize to the people. Now, evangelism walk will be done in the community for this service. So this will be led by Missionary Coburn and uh, Missionary Samuels. So please feel free to talk to them to find out more details as it relates to the evangelism walk. Also, tonight we will be having service at 6.30 p.m. So we are inviting you all out once more. I know we have school tomorrow and work and all of those things for those persons who were on break, but we still crave your support. So please bear these announcements in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let us just continue to magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Can I get uh, greetings and a shout of praise from missionary Thomas in Jesus' name? Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? Shall we lift up holy hands in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. Somebody exalt the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He picked me up. He turned to me around and he planted my feet on higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. I'm moving forward in Jesus' name. Praise him. Hallelujah. Let us continue to magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise, praise Jesus. Praise him. Praise him. Um, can everybody please stand to their feet? Hallelujah. Praise him. As past our pastor, Pastor A.R. Thomas will come and address us in Jesus' name. And we please receive him with our prayers. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, Shiloh, give God a praise. Hallelujah. We are here to magnify him. We are here to lift him up. Uh, hallelujah. It's a good thing to give thanks uh, unto the Lord. Uh, just find three things to thank the Lord for right now. Hallelujah. to worship you we were created to honor you oh. as you praise him the pain will have to go as you praise him Abashaya, the feeling will have to leave oh Shanda Utabasaya Somebody worship our God. Huh? Neck pain will have to go. Who can Foot pain. Huh? We come to worship.
of our God. Somebody praise our great God. Greater than any sickness. Greater than any disease. Greater than any problem that you are facing. Greater than any mashotorobo saya. I said, our God, whatever you're facing today, our God is greater. I said, our God is greater. Tell somebody, our God is greater. I want you to find one neighbor. Say to them, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through. But our God is greater. Our God is greater greater than your problems our God is greater our God is greater let them know our God is greater is greater oh somebody need to know that the God of the Bible is alive and well and in our midst our God is greater tell somebody else you may be going through a lot huh? but our god is greater huh? and the god of the mountain hey, ba -ba -ba hey just get me the olive oil somebody you're in here you're feeling immense pain in your neck oh jesus i'll just give you 60 seconds to come immense pain in your neck i said life is easy Shandaya. when you're upon the mountain in the Shaya, you have peace of mind like you never know but then things change
you have neck pain. Anybody else neck pain? All right. When things go, utata shede busa, make them right for the God. God of the day, he still God in the night. The God of the day, he still God in the night. Oh, somebody praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody praise our great God. Somebody lift up our great God. Uh, today is your day for your deliverance. Uh, what God did for her, God will do for you. Somebody praise Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell us what was happening to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God of Daniel, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Mighty God. Saint of God. Mighty God. I've been going through some great pain in my body. Mighty God. When it's not one thing, it's the other, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God. <laughs> Last year this time, <laughs> I was preparing to go to the theater to do a surgery, mighty God. And saints of God, you know, two weeks ago, I went and do a mammogram on my breast, mighty God. And I got back the result on Thursday, and it is inconclusive, but mighty God. Mighty God, I look to you, dear God, mighty God. Mighty God, I was saying to my mother overseas, I was saying, Mama, when it's not one thing, it's the other. She said, girl, if you're faith to God, which I am doing, mighty God, I was referred to do an ultrasound, mighty God. So I'm in the process of taking care of that, but I know that God is a healer. I know that God is a deliverer. Mighty God, when I did my pop smear, it showed that there are issues in my womb. And mighty God, it was not anything of cancer, but I have to go through what I have to go through. And mighty God, this is not saying that it's cancer, but we know not, but I know that it is not cancer. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, when it's not wanting mighty God. Sometimes I just feel like I would just say, I give up. Sometimes I say, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's next, mighty God. But I lift my faith to God. I've been having this pain in my, around my neck, and there's a bomb that come here. I went to the doctor, and I showed him, and he said, it's the bone. But mighty God, when it's ready to pain me around my neck, Jesus. I cannot lift up my hands. I Jesus. cannot move. There are pain, pain, pain. Jesus. Mighty God, but I look to you, dear God. I lift up my hands to you. Lord, have mercy. I said when I was in sin, it wasn't, I wasn't in so many pain. And now I'm serving you, mighty God. When it's not one thing, it's the other, but I promise. I stamp, uh, trample everything on the, the enemy. The enemy is after me, mighty God. I trample it under, under my feet. You pray my strength. I mean to serve Jesus. Come on, somebody give glory. Somebody give God glory. Come on, after three, everybody say fire. One, two, three. Fire. Burn, 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 burn. Burn, 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 burn. Rabba, shut up. Kuto, Rabba, Kito, shut up. Makete, Rimo, shut up. Rabba, no, 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 
Somebody give God praise. Somebody believe in the healing power of God. Huh? Begin to praise God. Huh? Begin to praise God. Huh? Our God doesn't just identify your problem. Huh? But our God brings a solution. Huh? God is about to bring solution to your problem. Huh? Not next week. Huh? Not next year. Huh? Right now. Huh? If you believe. Huh? Miracle. Huh? Miracle. Oh, hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence oh, of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yay, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I don't hear it. Somebody praise God, no man. Praise Jesus. I declare this is a church filled with the praise of God that offer acceptable worship unto God. I speak over the womb of this church. Oh, I declare this church huh, offer up worship unto God. Huh, that God has to say to no quiet now. Huh. Uno quiet now. Oh, Shanda. I said, this church will get to a place in God uh, that when we offer up worship, uh, God has to say, Uno quiet now down there. Quiet down there. Uh, ba -ba -ba uh. Hallelujah. 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 This is a church who is excited about Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands. Hallelujah. God is good. Never forget your purpose. You are created to worship. You are created to praise God. Hallelujah. And let me give you a secret. When you start worshiping from Monday to Saturday, worship becomes easy on a Sunday. But when you're out of practice, oh Lord, hold up here and say, I'm a worshiper of the true and living God. I worship Him seven days a week, I worship Him every single day. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God bless you, Amen. All protocols being observed, Sister Blackson did a good job of welcoming each and every one of you, all the officers, about everyone, in Jesus' name, glory be to God. just want to add uh, amen to the announcement that fasting is on Wednesday and Bible class is also on Thursday. Glory be to God. God bless you. I'm so happy to see all of God's one, wonderful people. Come on, give God praise for his people. Amen. All of you are special. Special greetings to our birthday lady today, Sister James. God bless you. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. Hallelujah for his life. Hallelujah. He has given you for your testimonies. One more year to God be the... Come on, give God praise. In this church, we celebrate our seniors. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise for her. Praise him. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. We appreciate you. Amen. And what you bring to the body of Christ. Uh, glory be to God. Uh, happy to have all of God's wonderful children. You are blessed in convention. Uh, glory be to God. And I have my advocate for convention. Uh, hallelujah. Missionary Sylvester. Amen. Come on. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. 
her second time in convention. She love it, she love it. From last year, she said, I'm going back this year. And this year, she said, God's willing, next year again. We want more and more persons uh, to go into convention. Praise Jesus. Praise, Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. And if you are not yet filled with the Holy Ghost, amen. Convention is a place where we go and we specialize in tarrying for the Holy Ghost. Praise Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. In my younger days, when I used to go to convention and booking. Amen. Me and brother Ryan and Reggie and everybody. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you have to get up from 5 o'clock out of the bed and make sure you reach a prayer meeting early. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. You have to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to God. So I implore you again about the importance of it. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. So I give God thanks for you, brethren. I want to remind you that we had to reschedule our street meeting until next week, Sunday. Amen. Everybody should be ready by that time. The evangelism team should be ready. Missionary Coburn and Missionary Summers to gather all the people. Glory be to God to walk the community and get you ready for our evangelism. Go into all the world. That is our mandate. So I don't want to say it's for a small group of people. But it is for? Who is it for? Everyone. And this lady opened her mouth saying, all, you're supposed to gather them. It is your duty to gather all the people and show that we're ready for evangelism. So God bless you in Jesus' name. We have a key to be blessed today. Come Hallelujah. on, praise God. Praise him. Praise, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. God is blessing his people. Amen. Let us stand. Glory be to God. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for providing for your children. We pray that you go before into this house, God Almighty. Consecrate it. Let your presence be there, God Almighty. Let this house be a house of joy, a house of prayer, a house, God Almighty, that praise you, God Almighty. We pray that you go before, saturate the very ground. Release your hand just to go before her. Let the cupboards never be empty, God Almighty. Provide, make ways, God Almighty. Let thanksgiving come from this house, knowing that you, God, uh, have done it. Uh, somebody say, in Jesus' name. This time the choir is coming to minister in Jesus' name. For the general offering and tithes, yes. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Somebody celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody know tonight, today, that the Lord, he's an on-time God. Yes, Bless the is. name of Jesus. He may not come when you want him to. Hallelujah. Sometimes the situation may stink, but when he shows up, hallelujah, he's going to turn it around. Hallelujah. Bless glory, glory, Bless glory, Bless glory, glory, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Just to worship the Lord with us. Hallelujah. Yes.
Amen. Hallelujah. Let us continue to lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. And as we're approaching the better part of the service, 
I call upon our youth president, Sister McClucking, to introduce the speaker for today. Oh, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Come on, come on, sing. for the Lord on our side, where would we be? This morning I greet my pastor, Pastor A.R. Thomas and wife, my director, Nathaniel Blockstock, VP, Sister Robinson, evangelists, missionaries, beautiful choir, musicians, tech team, you lovely saints, and all the returning visitors and visitors. I greet you in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ. It is the only name that has power. That when anything happens to us, that's the only name we call on. Because we know something is going to happen. We know that he's going to do something. And as the choir just sung, we may, he may not come when we want him. But he will be there on time. So this morning, I just want to welcome you all. Thank you for being in our youth service. Um, the various flat platforms, we welcome you also. Um, just giving God glory. Just honoring his name. Because if it had not been, if it had not been, where would we be? Young people, where would you be? We would be otherwise minded. We will be doing some things that we're not supposed to be doing. But because of the love of God, his grace and his mercy, we are in his presence. My, we have sinned and fallen short so many times. Uncountable. But God is faithful. And he keeps his word. Because if he tell you he's going to do something, don't think he's not going to do it. And if you think he's not going to do it, he's going to show you. He's going to show up. And he is going to show off. He's going to prove it to you that he can do it. So never ever, not you say never, but sometimes we do. But don't doubt God. Don't doubt him. I've done it before. I have done it before. But he, he proved to me, don't doubt me. I am willing and I'm able. All things are possible through me. It is me, Jesus, who have this world in the palm of my hand. It is I who made it and I know every inch of it and I can do it anything. So this morning I encourage young people look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Zero to 99 is considered still young. You're not old. You can hear. You can move. You can speak. You can, sh you can do everything. Look to Jesus. Look to him, the author and the finisher 
of our faith. I'm giving God thanks for this beautiful church. I am giving God thanks. You all are beautiful. You all are lovely. It doesn't matter what anybody wants to say negative. The Lord says you are lovely. You are wonderful people. By to God, you are giving standards for each other. Lord, have mercy this morning. Jesus, you are awesome. We glorify you, Jesus. We magnify you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the day when you sent me here. Hallelujah. I thank you for the day when you told Pastor, Pastor Thomas that the Lord is not through with you yet. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's just beginning. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm praying that you all pray for me. That I will continue. Hallelujah. That I will stand flat footed for the Lord. Because I tell you, I have some testings. And I have some trials. But I'm telling Jesus. you, God is taking me through them. Yes, Lord. I realize yes, that Lord. he's waking me up at some various hours of the night these days. And I have to pray. Hallelujah. But I'm asking Jesus. him for strength. Yes, Lord. And I'm asking him for endurance. Because he said the race is not for the swift, but who can endure? Amen. So I'm asking him just to continue to keep me in prayer. I'm also giving him thanks for my health. Praise Jesus. I'm doing things now that I realized that I couldn't do months ago. Hallelujah. Thank and it is you, not Jesus. because of me, but it is Jesus. because of the prayers that you pray for me sending up to heaven. Hallelujah. And God is answering them. Thank you, Jesus. I remember... Um, some time ago, I, I had a doctor's visit, and the doctor sent me to do an MRI because was, they were knowing, understanding why I am not hearing properly. But I realized the ears start opening up. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm hearing better from my left ears. Hallelujah. And the right ear is opening up. It has a little noise in it, but it is Jesus. opening up. Thank you, Jesus. And she sent me to do the MRI, and I did the MRI. And to God be the glory, she found nothing wrong. Hallelujah. But she still cannot understand Jesus. why the eye, the, the, the ears is still giving a little problem. So she's sending me to do another test to see Jesus. if I'm supposed to get assistance, hearing aid. But by Jesus. the grace of God, Hallelujah. I won't need any hearing Amen. aid. We come because in agreement where God has brought Jesus me from name. to where I am today, Hallelujah. I don't need no hearing aid. Amen. So Amen. I'm encouraging you to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Serve the Lord with gladness. Yes. Serve him with a will. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Jesus. We should always give praises unto the Lord. Amen. I must Forgive me, but I must also greet my committee members. Um, they are hardworking too. They have been working in the background, on the front line. They are there also. This morning, I just want to also, um, there will be a launch, um, Brother Blackstock. We have a, a, a youth department has a new launch. Um, we all know that a rally is in the air right now, and everybody is doing their fundraising. Each group is having their fundraising. So right now, the youth department is a bit on pause. But as soon as rally is completed, we'll be picking up the banner. So we'll have a new fundraising um, launch coming in where we have a $50 drive. Each and every um, group member will be updated on that. So as soon as rally is over, completed, we will also start our launch of getting our um, fundraising on. Um, youth, so youth meetings, we are asking you all to support. We have some very ardent supporters, supporters who don't miss a night of youth service. And we are giving God thanks for you. Some people think that youth service is just for the, the, the young, 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 young children. 
but it's for everybody. Amen. Each and everyone will learn something, and every youth night we have something different. We have something encouraging, powerful. The last time Sister Shanavan was our activity coordinator, and we did some activities where we, 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 we wrote some things on paper and we tried to help each other uh, of things that we are going through. And she tried to help us and others put in their two cents in it. So it's not just about coming out and playing games. It's also helping you to grow in the Lord and even in the, the, the world also. So I'm encouraging you... Um, Brother Blackstock will be doing a session this Tuesday, time management. We all sometimes fall down on that. So I'm encouraging you, please come on out. Take, take away your take from it and let us work on it. God is good. God is good. God is good good. Words cannot explain who God is and how God is. But I give him thanks. I pray that you enjoy the rest of the service and that you'll take your take from it. Because every word that the preacher preached, something is in store for you. Something is in it for you. Look into yourself and take your part and work on it. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name I know. Okay, praise Jesus. So I'm now being honored to give the ta I've given the task of introducing our speaker. Um, this speaker, I will not say, I will talk about his academics. I am not going to talk about what his qualities. I am going to tell you that God is working on this young man. I've seen it. And God is lifting him up to a standard. Amen. He's not just a regular brother. Hallelujah. He's a brother that God is using. He wants Amen. the best. And even though sometimes it might not look to us like that is what he's doing. But God is using him. Amen. Please Hallelujah. pray for him. Thank pray you. for him. Hallelujah. Because God is going to burst him out. God is going to make him into what he wants him Amen. to be. Hallelujah. This morning, I introduced to some, and I take the pleasure of presenting to you no other than, please stand, our day speaker, none other than Nathaniel Blackstock, our youth director. Hallelujah. Bless, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give myself away. Yeah. I give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. So
always shout of praise in the atmosphere. If you are here for one reason but to give God the glory, go ahead and give him some glory. I often admonish you that when I observe the secular world and they go to have their parties, um, no one needs to tell them what they are there for. No one needs to tell them of their objective. Most times you have to be calming them down instead of telling them to do what they need to do. Oh, good God from glory. And we serve a God that is not dead. We serve a God that is risen. Um, if we should ask everyone inside of here to tell of the goodness of God, next year will be still inside here. Hallelujah. Uh, so with that said, then I am sure that we all Hallelujah. have something to give God thanks for. And let me just say this quickly. Whenever you find yourself at a point when you come in the house of God and you have to have your favorite person in the pulpit for you to give God, then you are in trouble. You need to go back to Bethel. And I say that without an apology. Because whenever you are connected to God and you come for a purpose, then whosoever is standing in this pulpit has nothing to do with your blessing. Because the blessing comes from God. I want to educate you as well and to let you know that um, gift and calling is without repentance and God can use anybody to speak to your soul. I often hear my pastor say that it was an unsaved that introduced Christ to him. Uh, so if pastor would have been hard-headed and say that you are an unsaved, you cannot tell me anything about God, then we would not have our pastor here today. So I want you to get in the mindset that you come for an objective and and one of the things that i really don't understand about us as believers of god is that when we are at work or wherever we are in submission to man's command uh, but when we get inside the house of god we tend to be very stubborn and rebellious to the move of god but I'll have you to know that you are not hurting the pastor, you are not hurting the person who is standing here, uh, but you are hurting yourself. Uh, there are times that the Lord will use the base things of the earth to speak to us. Amen. And because we feel that a person does not have such capacity, we tend to submit ourselves to, to, rebellion, to be rebellious to what God is saying. But I want to educate you today and to bring you up to speed and open your heart because we serve a God that can use any and anyone to Hallelujah. bring his word. Amen. With that Hallelujah. said, Jesus. let me observe all protocols. We observe greetings to my pastor. I respect and adore this man so much. I want you to give a round of applause for our pastor. And, and if you notice at all times, I want to talk about this man so much because the truth is, some of us have one child, two children, four children, and we cannot manage them. But just imagine a pastor have a whole of a hundred and odd persons with a hundred different personalities to deal with. And the truth to be told, church people are one of the hardest people to deal with. That is just the truth. Amen, amen. So we want to give God thanks for the man of God, and we pray that God will continue to grant him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and give him but the techniques and strategies to deal with us because sometimes we can be very, very difficult to deal with. Amen, amen. With that said, this morning I want to turn. Oh, let me greet my wife. I must acknowledge her. She is, apart from God, she is a tower of strength to me. She is a person, pray for me. She is a person I vent to when I'm feeling down and feeling frustrated. And sometimes I feel like I don't want to be the youth director anymore. She always say to me that I don't believe you should step down. I believe that God have you there for a purpose and a reason. And she will often say to me, I can't tell you what to do, but I will not support that decision. Amen. And with that said, I have to go into my local corner and to examine myself and to seek God uh, for more strategies, more strength, more tolerance to approach and how to deal with the people of God. Hallelujah. You know, we don't want to find ourselves in Moses' position where we make people let us get so frustrated that we disobey 
the command of God. So I just want to salute to my wife. I love you. I appreciate you. I give thanks for your support. And she's a very hard working person behind the scene. Trust me, I can tell you that. She works endlessly. Anything that I'm a part of, she gives her 100% support. Amen. Thank God for her. I just want us to open our Bibles to send Mark 11. And we'll be looking at verse 15 to verse 17. In the essence of time, we can also find Isaiah 52 and verse 11. Let us stand for the reading of the word. We stand for the national pledge, for the national anthem, and we will stand when we see persons of dignitary, of government comes in our presence. So let us give honor to the King of Kings. If you could turn this panel for me, please. Thank you. If you have it, say, I have the word. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seaters of them that sold doves, and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel to the temple. 17. And he thought, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called, sorry, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Let's move over to Isaiah 52 and verse 11. The party, the party, go ye out from hence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean, that bear the vessel of the Lord. Amen. We just want to look at, we just want to give thanks for the word that he has given to us in the scripture. And we just want to, before we go into the word, I just want to ask Missionary Thomas to just read a word, prayer over this word today. Hallelujah, glory to God. Let us bow our heads, praise the name of Jesus, most righteous, eternal Father, our God, our Savior, King above our kings, Lord of our Lords. We gather here, Lord God, to hear from you. We pray as your servant stands, Lord God, before us, that you will, O oh God Almighty, wash him yet again. Hallelujah. Pour your anointing, mighty God, into him, Lord Jesus. Pour your anointing upon him. From the crown of his head to the very soles of his feet. We pray, O oh God Almighty, that he will speak expressly, Lord God Almighty, according to the Spirit of the Lord. What you have to say, Lord God, let his mouth, O oh God Almighty, be a sharp, stretching instrument. Hallelujah. As he speak, O oh God, thus said the Lord, Lord Amen. God Almighty. Let it rest upon the hearts of your people. We pray, God Almighty, it will bring forth healing and deliverance, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. Hallelujah. And work your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As I carefully look through these two scriptures, I would have picked out some key phrases that I want to explore this morning, this afternoon rather, and to share with you. My theme for this afternoon is keep your temple clean. Let me say that again. Keep your temple clean. And when I did my research in temple, it says a temple is literally a house of the Lord, a holy place set apart from the rest of the world. When I look at the word clean, it says free from dirt or other foul matters, as clean as water, clean cup, and a clean floor. And if we begin to look at this word, the principal Hebrew word for temple is elka, that is spelled H-E-L-K-A-L. -E when we think about a temple, sometimes we want to look at a building, and we would see a temple as a place that we go to worship, 
And if I should ask you that, that's what the answer will be. Everybody will tell me that it's a, some person will tell me that it's a building, it's somewhere where we go to worship. In times of old, we would have realized that a lot of these places were designed for that purpose, to worship God, to gather together and to worship God. Because there was a time when there was no temple, that we had persons had to depend on the priest to give God praise on their behalf. But we have graduated from that stage, and then God would have seen the purpose for us to construct a building uh, for persons to gather in together to encourage each other and to worship together in spirit and in truth. But as time was going by, persons would have started to take for granted the mercies of God for granted, and they would have started to use those buildings for other reasons. But in St. Mark, God would have showed up in Jerusalem and went straight to the temple. And when he got there, the scene that was there was unpleasant. Uh, they were not using the temple for the purpose of which it was built for, of which it was created for. Uh, so God was upset and he decided to put them out and began to overturn and to turn things upside down. Uh, so sometimes when you see persons of God are upset with a particular behavior or action, it is because the spirit that resides within them uh, uh, is upset uh, that this thing is not of God. This behavior, this mannerism is not of God. Uh, so God would have instructed them to leave the temple with such behavior. I want to emphasize and to share with you that this morning, our temple is not just a literal building that we are sitting in this morning. And if you are of that understanding that the temple is this literal building, then you need to go back to Bethel. Uh, you have got to understand that the temple is us. Uh, the temple is your body. It's my body. This is where God resides. This is where God let his presence be. Uh, and somebody would say you cannot throw wine into a dirty vessel. And if we want God to be a part of our vessel, uh, then we have got to make sure that our vessel is clean. I want to share something with you in the physical realm. I remember when I just got married and my wife and I, before we got married rather, and we decide that we need a place for ourselves. We were both living at family residence, so you know you can't marry and stay at family house. I would not recommend that. Um, so we decided to house hunting. And as we start to look for a place, we would have gone upon numerous places. And when we go, we would be displeased with some of the places. Some of them were not properly structured. Some of them did not have what we desired. Uh, so we would have turned them down and decided to look again. Uh, I want you to understand that God is examining. God is seeking for a temple to dwell in. God is roaming this earth. He is roaming Larson Church for a vessel that he can reside in. Uh, and when he is examining your vessels, uh, uh, if he finds that your vessel is unworthy, uh, he is not going to reside in your vessel. Uh, we as people, we love the finest things. Uh, so why is it that we want to give God the worst things? Why is it that we don't want our vessel to be vessels of honor? Why is it that we don't want our temple to have the finest things inside it? Why we don't want our temple to have the truth in it? Why we don't our, want our temple to walk according to the word of God? Uh, to walk according to the precepts and the principles of God? I'll have you to understand that as we would have gone and searched out various places. Uh, uh, there comes a time that we had to make a decision because time was coming to an end. Our wedding date was coming up and we wanted to get a place before that date. Uh, uh, so we sit down and we began to analyze uh, all the places that we'd have gone to and we would have talked to ourselves and think, what is it that we dislike about this place? What is it that we dislike about this place? What we dislike, is it that we can live with it? Is it that we can cope with it? Uh, for me as a man, and give my wife the preference because, you know, as men, we are more easier to adjust than the females. So I always give her the preference. Uh, 
You say, you tell me what you like. It has to be very out of the ordinary for me to say, well, no. I'll always give her the preference. And this morning, we want to give God the preference to examine us and to, align, and to see if what we are doing in our temple is in alignment with the word of God. You see, we cannot be a vessel of honor without the word of God. We have got to understand that in order for God to dwell in us, then we have got to make sure that God is pleased with us. Uh, our action can defile our temple. Words that come from our mouth can defile our temple. Uh, Sometimes even our very thoughts can defile our temple. Uh, in order for us to make sure that we are in alignment of God, then we have got to show what we want for ourselves. We have got to show that we want this man Jesus. Uh, you see, when you are looking at house, uh, you have got to make sure that you are completely pleased uh, uh, with that house. Uh, because when you make a decision, uh, Elder Samuels, uh, uh, the owner of that house is going to give you a contract. Uh, and they're going to tell you to go to it properly. And they're going to lay down all the rules that goes God Almighty, with the renting of that house or the sale of that house, whichever decision you make. And once you put your signature to that paper, uh, nothing that is on that paper can change again until the lease has come to an end. You have got to understand that once you go down in the pool and you take on Jesus Christ, uh, you are now the body of Jesus. Your temple, uh, God Almighty, represent Jesus, you are no longer Andre Thomas. Uh, you are no longer Nathaniel Blackson. You are no longer Amnesia um, Thomas. Uh, you are no longer Michael Samuels. But you are Jesus Christ. Uh, you represent Jesus Christ. Uh, you got to understand uh, that when you represent Jesus Christ, uh, your temple cannot be an ordinary temple. Your temple cannot carry any on anything in it. Uh, your temple has got to represent the glory of God. Uh, I want you to understand uh, that even though the ark was a makeshift thing uh, with hood, uh, it represents the glory of God. Uh, it carries the presence of God. Uh, I want you to understand stand in Laris and Shiloh that your body carry the temple of God especially if you are filled with the Holy Spirit your body carry the temple of God I want you to understand that we are very keen to be submissive to a contract if you go on a job and they give you a contract you are so submissive to that contract you follow every line every phrase, every phrase of the contract to the T uh, because you're saying you do not want to breach the contract. Uh, you do not want to lose your job. Uh, but when it comes on to a temple, when it comes on to the living God, we speak anything, we do anything, we conduct ourselves any and any way. But God is saying to us this afternoon that your body belongs to me. Your body is a temple of the living God. Your body Carry the, temp, carry the spirit of God inside of you. And if you're carrying the power of God inside of you, then you cannot behave any and any hour. I want you to understand uh, that as people of God, uh, we are the temple of God. Uh, we are too rebellious. Uh, uh, I want you to understand uh, that when God begins to examine us uh, as people of God, the temple that was supposed to show love, uh, show so many ages, uh, the temple that is supposed to be affectionate to others, uh, is showing so much God. Uh, but I come by to tell somebody and to remind you that your body is a temple of the living living God. Without God in our temple, we dare not operate. We dare not move. We cannot do as we please because God is in our temple. We well, want you to understand that when you sign the contract with God, uh, God Almighty, you, if you do anything that is outside of the word of God, you are in breach of this contract. Uh, you are in want. Uh, and I want you to know that whenever you breach a contract, uh, you can bring to the court of law. Am I correct, somebody? Good God from glory. But I want somebody to understand up in this place. Uh, we take God for granted. Uh, and we take the word mercy for joking. God is going to forgive us. Uh, we can act as all we want. But I want you to understand uh, and that the court of the law is coming up with great day is coming. Uh, when we, God is going to take up our contract uh, and he's going to review your contract. Uh, 
and he's going to look at it to see uh, if who you operate uh, on this time on earth uh, is in alignment uh, with the contract that you sign. Uh, uh, some of you are going to look at me and say, Brother Blocks, like you're crazy. I didn't sign any paper. Well, let me educate in the spiritual realm. The moment you go down into that pool, the matter of fact, the moment you raise your right hand and say, I will go through to you, you sign the decree that you will stand up with Jesus. You sign the decree that I am yours forever. I belong to you. I will follow your precepts. I will follow your command. I will walk according to your words. So the moment you go down into that pool, especially if you receive the Holy Ghost, you are more in warrant of the word of God. We are living in a time where we do not, God Almighty, recognize that we carry, that our body carry the Holy Spirit. Our body must, must represent Jesus Christ. We have got to understand that when we are not in alignment with the word of God, God is going to get hungry. God is going to get upset. God is going to get mad at us. And he's going to pour out his wrath upon us. And God is going to come and overturn. You wonder why some of you are not getting to with some things in your life. Check your temple, man. Check your contract. Check your contract. Check your spiritual contract. See if what you are doing is in alignment with the word of God. See if what you are doing, God is pleased with you. When last you tell somebody about Jesus, when last you show somebody some love, when last you stand by somebody, when last we be submissive to the Holy Ghost, when last we stop criticizing when somebody is preaching, when last we stop criticizing each other, and start to think that, get the mind of God, see things as all God sees things from his perspective, not looking at things from our perspective, but from the perspective of God. We have got to understand that we have got to get out of ourselves and get into the spiritual realm. We have got to understand that we cannot serve God in the physical realm. We have got to serve him in the spiritual realm. Because if we should try to serve him in the physical realm, then we are going to fall by the wayside. Because the spirit of God does not always strive with man. But we are the endeavor to make sure that the spirit of God is striving with us. How can we do that? By going into fasting. Some of us in fasting don't call fasting. You're never to fast. But as I, but as I spoke to them in convention, and I told them that, it is why it's good for the church to engage you. You have got to engage yourself in the Lord. The psalmist David said that I encourage myself in the Lord. There are not all the time persons going to be there to encourage you. But you have got to have your own source. You have got to have your own power. And this means that now, that if your temple is carrying the Holy Ghost, if your temple is where it's supposed to be in alignment, then you don't need and want to push up to give God the glory because you are keeping your temple pure. You are keeping your temple holy. You have got to understand now huh, that this is a situation. There's a time when the Lord, Lord come and observe what is going on. After you have lived a period of time into the house, am I correct, Sister Coburn? The Lord, Lord will step inside uh, and observe uh, from kitchen to living room to bathroom to washroom and even the yard here to see if you are of keeping with the contractor, I have you to know that from time to time God is observing you. And sometimes God give a word from you to ex for you to examine yourself. But instead of we examining our temple and making sure that we're sweeping out the corners, making sure that we're wiping out the cupboard, making sure that we're dusting out on the deer, uh, we get upset uh, and we go to throw shades uh, and say, people, is this and that. Uh, but I want you to understand that's a favor for immature Christian. Uh, when you want to grow in Christ, uh, when you want to keep your temple clean, uh, then you don't matter what the medication may be. I remember when I was a child and I was sick. My grandmother did not give me anything that was sweet. Uh, if you want to get rid of an illness uh, and you begin to consume some soda, I can tell you you're making yourself sick. Uh, good God from glory. If you are sick and you want to get better and you go and consume something that is not that beneficial to you and sweet, it's not going to give you uh, the required result that you are looking at. Uh, but anything that is bitter, the Bible says, purge me with hyssop. Uh, some of us may feel like hyssop is a nice taste. Uh, but I want you to know that anything that purge the body, anything that rattle the body, anything that brings cleanliness to the body,
cannot be something sweeter. The word of God cannot be sweet and nice and juicy all the time. Good God from glory. If you want your temper to get cleaner, then you've got to condition your mind that whatever may come, whatever the condition, I am willing. I am willing to allow God to scrub me. I am willing to allow God to take full control of me. I am willing to take instructions. I am willing to take rebuke. You know why some of us temple is not in alignment. Oh, good God from glory. We can't take instruction. But some of us, we can't take instruction. We want to lead people. One of the things that we are facing with, if we can't take instruction, then we are not qualified to lead people. And I recognize in our churches these days, everybody wants to lead. Everybody wants to lead. Everybody wants a portfolio that say, I am the leader. I'm in control. How many of us willing to do the real work that that portfolio contains? We are happy for the title. We embrace the title. But are we willing to do the work that the title entails? You see, we have got to understand that if we want our body to be the living temple of the living God, then we have got to change our perspective. We have got to change the way or we look on things. You have got to be like a little child that is submissive to the will and way of God. We have to get to a place that we are cognizant of the fact that I am the temple. My body is the temple. What I want you to understand there is that um, when you have your house, you don't allow anybody, any and anybody to come into your house. Am I speaking the truth up inside you? Some of us don't even want some people that we get. We don't even want them to know where we live. But yet still we allow anything inside our temple. Yet still we allow some words, some thoughts, some deeds of action to stir up and to build up inside of us. But yet still we take so much care of the physical structure. Some of us clean our house right round the clock. When last have you do a spiritual detox? Clean out some things is not, should not be inside of you. When I was a little boy, my mother used to give me a herb, they call it wash out. And that thing will let you go to the bathroom on a regular basis. When last have we gone on our knees and asked God to spiritually detox us, purge our temple inside out, wash us afresh again and make us more like him. Come on, somebody. I want to share with you this afternoon five ways I know we can keep our temple holy. Do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye in God, and ye are not yourself? You have got to recognize who we are. And who is in control of us. Until we recognize who we are and who is in control of us. Then we will never take care of our temple. We will never make the attempt. We will never understand the value that we hold. That we carry inside of us. Some of us we don't even want. If we could avoid the rain keep and fall on our house. We would have do it. I can tell you that. That's all men are. If we could go out there with the umbrella when the rain is falling and put it over our house, not to let the rain touch it, would have done it. But yet still, we allowed any and anything to happen to our temple, which carried the power of the living God. If you notice when they were bringing up the ark, there was a specific instruction that was given. You see, you cannot carry God's power any and any hour as you like. And David gave the man specific instruction on how to bring the ark. When we got saved, 
God gave us the instruction. Moses went up to the mountain and he got the commandments. And he brought it down to the people of Israel. And he gave it to them that this is the manual that you should live your life by. And it would have told us multiple things that we should not allow to be in our temple. That we should not allow to be a part of us. Uh, and yet still, we seem to allow these things to happen. But this morning, I'm encouraging you and I'm imploring you. Get back to better. Get back to better. You see, if my car is dirty and I feel like I need a deep cleaning, then I bring it to the car wash. Uh, some of us need to go to God's spiritual car wash this afternoon. And when you go into that car wash, I want you to allow God to turn on his Holy Ghost hose inside out. When that person at the car wash is washing your car and he turns on that power hose and the water began to spray and you can look and observe the muck, the dirt that is running off that car. That is how we look like in the presence of God when we are unclean. That is how our temple looks like. Mucky, dirty. When we do not do the things of God, that is what we look like. Let me share with you quickly. One of the things I want you to understand and to observe. Surrendering your body as a living sacrifice for the glory of God. You see, at times you do not understand that how we dress, how we operate, how we stand up, how we pose, how we posture. I see Christians, persons, when you go on the media, and you see the kind of picture that some of us have of us Christian people. Some of the females. I'm saying to myself, this is how you are portraying the body, the temple of the living God. This is what you're telling the unsaved that this is how the temple of the living God look. Come on, people of God. We got to reach to a part where we surrender our entire being to God. So we are going to be very careful of how we dress. Uh, for we are done ourselves, both males and female. Come on, somebody. When we are going to work, we are properly attired. And I'm speaking the truth. But when we are coming to church, <laughs> my God, sometimes we have to shake our head to see how some persons attire themselves to come to church. And, and that, this is one of the reasons why the uniform was instituted in the Shiloh organization. One of, don't say I say, one of the reasons for persons to adorn themselves properly. Right? So we must, we must make sure that our body, when people see us the way we are done, there goes a child of God. God dwells in that person. They must see Jesus by even your very appearance. And they can't see Jesus if you dress a certain way. If you adorn yourself a certain way. They won't see Jesus in you. So we got to understand that we must adorn ourselves properly. Keep your body free from sexual sin. We are living in a world where this thing is all over the media. It advertises, even if they are advertising a bottle of water, they involve sex in it. I don't know that getting it, but that's the world that we are living in. I want us to understand that we have got to free ourselves, we've got to guard our minds of the things that we expose ourselves to on the internet, on the phones. Sometimes you are in groups and people send things in the groups that are unpleasant. Do like me, I just delete it immediately. Right? So you may not have a control over a group and what they're sending there. But you have control over your personal device. Am I speaking the truth up in this place? You have control over your personal device. So you delete it. So you have got to understand that even as people of God, that the world has gone a wire when it comes to sex. Everything is about that. And first Corinthians. Say it was commit 
free from sexual immortality. Every other sin a person commit is outside the body. But the sexual immortal person sin against his own body. Right? So when we do these things, people of God, uh, we not only sin against God, but we sin against ourselves. We, we, we deprive ourselves of the blessing that God wants to give to us. Uh, we deprive ourselves of the wife that God wants to give to us. We deprive ourselves of the husband that God has in store for us. Uh, so we have got to understand that our body is, is the temple of the living God. And it has got to represent that. We must make sure that our body is representing the temple of the living God. Maintain healthy mind. We have got to understand that the mind is where everything starts. Where everything begins. Uh, it is like the engine in the car. Uh, you may go in and step on your gas. It never goes nowhere. Uh, but as soon as you turn on the ignition, the engine comes on and gives you power. Uh, so I want you to know that the mind is a power to sin. The mind is a power to serve God. But you have got to make a choice on which one you decide to do. Am I pressing the gas of serving God? Am I pressing the gas of doing what God does not require of me? We have got to understand. Um, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7 speaks. For God give us a spirit not of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. So despite of the feeling that may come upon us young people, despite of the feeling that may come upon us old people, elderly persons, uh, uh, that we must recognize uh, that our body is the temple of the living God, and God required holiness from the inward part. Uh, God required holiness from in our mind. Uh, we must always represent holiness. Uh, if you observe a lot of institutions, uh, they carry a logo uh, with something written on it. They are telling you that is what they are representing. Uh, when I was working at the cleaner company, their motto was, where life unfolds. It means that whatever you want to know, it's in the paper. They write about it. They are telling you about it. Uh, so we want to have the logo on our chest. Jesus is holy. Jesus is righteous. Uh, can somebody give God a glory up in this place? We have got to write with that logo. Uh, when somebody sees us, they recognize that Jesus is alive and well because of how we adorn ourselves, because of how we conduct ourselves. Uh, we do not defile our temple only by the way how we are tired, or we defile our temple by the way we conduct ourselves in our mannerism or we speak to each other, or we conduct ourselves, uh, uh, good God from glory. Sometimes you don't know who is looking at you and who is watching you. I remember I was at a place one day and the person was being rude to me and I began to deal with it in a manner. And when I go and sit down, a lady said to me, are you a Christian? I said, why are uh, She said, the way you deal with it, only a Christian would deal with it that way because that lady was rude. But I can tell you, um, we, we don't know who is watching us. Uh. We, we, we don't understand that we have got to allow. And when we have our temple is clean and in ordinance with God, then it gives us wisdom. It teaches us how to operate. That's where the mind comes in. Uh. So we have got to make sure that we are keeping in alignment with the word of God at all times. See, we cannot do without the word of God in this time that we are living in. Uh. We have got to make sure that God is inside of us, is working with us, and he dwells in us. Give God the glory somebody. Give God the glory somebody. Give God the glory somebody. You see, when we have our own house, we do not want anything to happen. We do not want any and anybody to walk inside. Some of us will tell people that you got to take off your shoes you're coming into my house. Am I correct? Good God of glory. Uh, some of us will tell them that, hey, we do not allow persons any and anywhere in our house. Am I correct? Uh, some of us will just let them stay on the veranda. We give them a drink of water and that's it. Uh, but yes, still we make the devil walk up and down inside our house. We make the devil do as it ever like inside our house. We allow the devil to come and tell us all kind of thing and ramsack our house, ramsack our temple and do as it ever like. And before you know it, you are on the brink of giving up on God because you allow the devil to come inside the house and take charge. You have got to understand that you have some family members that when they are in a situation and they come to you for help, give them a night's sleep and send them on their way the very next day. Because the moment you let them stay overnight, 
and began to feel comfortable. They are going to begin that they are they live here now uh, uh, so they can operate as all they want to operate. Uh, what I'm trying to say to you that the moment you make sin come into your temple and you do nothing about it, uh, uh, then it's going to operate. The moment you make sin come into your mind uh, and you do nothing about it, uh, it's going to start to take over your body. So you start to tell a liar and you said it's nothing. Uh, and the moment you allow a lie to pass, uh, uh, good God from glory, then you start to lose her. Uh, you see a sister and you start to lose her uh, and things start to come into your mind. And you start to conceive a lot of things. Uh, and before you know it, uh, the very action you begin to commit, uh, fornication and adultery. Uh, I came out to tell somebody, lift up your foot and stamp out every sin. Uh, uh, I always tell my wife, uh, the very moment you make one thing pass through your gate, uh, remember that it's all kind of things going to pass through your gate. So the moment you see something that is not pleasant in the sight of God, stamp on it with a prayer. Stamp on it with a praise. Uh, uh, you do not belong here. Uh, I know some of us, when we see the joy of our witness coming, we learn and lock up our doors because uh, we don't want to hear them. Uh, when we see some people coming to beg something, we lock up our doors because we don't want to give them anything. Uh, that's the same attitude that we are going to have again seen over our bodies. Uh, uh, when you're on that phone uh, uh, and a text coming that is not in alignment with the word of God, uh, delete it. Uh, somebody said delete. Somebody said delete. Somebody said delete. And if it goes as far as that, block that number. Somebody said black. Somebody said black. Somebody said black. But sometimes we encourage these arguments because we are human beings. But I came by to tell somebody a little level, a whole lump. So if you allow that to pass and you entertain it, then the person is going to go further. Oh, good God from glory. You're looking so nice. <laughs> oh. You know I like to go to though. That's okay, man. Oh my God of glory. Yeah, I want you to come to my house. You know, I want to show you something. Uh, good God from glory. And before you know it, all kind of things start to happen. But if my dear sister, when this, I like you, I say, hey, hey, the blood of Jesus is against you. Uh, what kind of like you're talking about? Uh, it is not the like of God or the love of God. Uh, get away from it, Satan. Uh, I'm on a mission for God. Uh, my body is the temple of the living God. Come on, young people, stand up inside this place with me. Uh, we, we, we can all attest to this, uh, that we have gone through this situation. And sometimes we allow these things to overtake us. Uh, but I came by to encourage you, block and delete anything that is not in accordance with the word of God. Block and delete. Touch your neighbor and tell them, block and delete. Block and delete. Block and delete. Block and delete. Tell somebody, block and delete. If it's not going to let you grow, Black and delete. I love my pastor one time. I was putting a program together. And he said to me, Brother Blackshock, anything that does not give God glory, take it out of the program. So let me share it back with you now. Anything that does not bring God glory, anybody does that in the space, that is not going to help you to bring God glory. Step aside. Uh, I'm going to step on your car now. You've got to understand that even the very company that you keep can, can defile your temple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you all getting quiet now? The very company that you keep can defile the temple. If me boss gone and Ella stand up beside of me and police come for me, what? Well, they never take me alone. They might take you too. We are company. So you got to understand. Be careful of the company that you are keeping. And I want you to know that there's bad company in church. Yeah, man, you're getting silent time, you know. There's bad company in church, right on the very choir, right in the very queue, right among the ministers. Bad company is, come, is in the church. Open up your spiritual eyes. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for knowledge. I'm not telling you that you must not talk to them. But you have got to be careful how close you let them get to you. You have got to be careful how close you let them get to you. Can I get a call on this mic? You have got to be careful or you, get, or you get, let them get close to you. you. You see, I learned this thing a long time ago. That, that person will rub off on you and you don't think you know it. Can I say that again? Persons will rub off on you and you don't even know it. Because it is like this. If you are on the corner with the child, go to it every day. One day, one day without even one of them say, see, I split for you. 
You have to build one yourself. What I'm trying to say to you, we have got to be careful of the circle if we want to keep our temple clean. We have got to be careful of the persons that we we keep in our circle. Anybody that is not helping me to go higher in God or to give glory, I'm going to pray for you. But I'm not going to keep you close. Let me say that again. If you are not helping me to go high in God, I'm going to pray for you. But I'm not going to keep you close. Yes, you have got to understand that when God wants to bring us to a particular place, that we cannot bring any and anybody with us. When God has a mission and a purpose for us, you cannot bring any and anybody. You have got to understand. I have a friend, and when he was moving up into the ranks of pastoring, a lot of persons say that he changed. But they didn't understand that he did not change. But he has got to show a better example of who he is and what he's about. Uh, so the persons who we used to hang out with, and, and, and he said he used to sometimes have eye adjusted and stuff that is not really of the Lord. He recognized that in order for him to grow as a pastor in his pastoral duty, he has got to step away from them. Not to say that he's not dealing with them, but he can't keep close connection with them. What I'm saying to you this afternoon, get me straight and plain now. You have got to analyze and observe persons in your circle that is not helping you to give God glory. That is not helping you to keep your temple holy. That you have got to give them a look at this time. Pray for them. Keyword, pray for them. Encourage them. But make sure you keep them off a distance. Stand up in the space where we give God the glory. Stand up in this place while we give God the glory. Just give God a shout up in this place, somebody. I say this last thing. Be ye holy, for I am holy. God bless you in Jesus' name. Oh, Hallelujah. Come on, somebody praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, what God brought you here. Hallelujah. And so I invite you to come to the altar, whether you save or unsave you, you're a backslider. We want to get locked in with God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. We don't only come to here and have a good time, but the word of God is here for reproof, to correct us, to encourage us. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're not yet saved, this is the opportunity. There is come in a day where no holiday shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears. All is peace. On that happy, happy 
What a day. We're letting somebody know there is coming a day. No heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears. All is peace forevermore. On that happy golden shore. There'll be no sorrow there. No more burdens to bear. No more sickness, no more pain. No more parting over there. And forever I'll be. With the one who died for me. What a day. What a day. Glorious day. Are you looking forward to that day today? What a day. When my Jesus. When I look upon his face. And lead me to the promised land. What a day. There'll be no sorrows there. No more burdens to bear. No more sickness, no more pain. No more pain. No more parting. No more parting. And forever I will be. And forever I will be. With the one who died for me. With the one who died for me. What a day. Somebody lift your hands and sing unto the Lord what a day that will be. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face. When I look upon his face. The one who saved me. The promise, what a day, what a day, glorious day that will be. Bible said, In a moment, when you think it not, the Son of Man shall appear. It is now 1257. If he should come this moment, would you be ready? Would you hear, well done, or will you hear, depart? Well done, or depart? Well done, or depart? Well done, or depart? For well, the Spirit of the Lord is a discerner of the heart, the thought of man. Will you hear, well done? Or will you hear depart? Jesus. 
Jesus came to save and to seek that which were lost. That is his purpose. It is not in his will that any man should perish. Don't let anybody fool you. It's not his will that you should perish. But all should come. We don't want to be gathering in a church building Sunday after Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and here departs. So Lord, whatever is in our life that is causing us to hear depart, we command it to depart from us. Ooh, Shia. Every sin that so easily beset us. Every spirit of pride, malice, anger, fornication, adultery, whatever it is. Every sin spell S-I-N. Ooh, And no sin cannot enter there. Oh, Shanda. The devil is a liar. How is it that they said that they don't, they, they don't preach holiness in Shiloh? Without holiness, no man shall see him. Your title can't save you. Your status can't save you. Without holiness, no man, no man, no man, no man, no man shall see him. Holiness unto the Lord is our watchword and song. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Jesus, come out from among them. Be ye separate. Separate yourself. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch my brother, touch my sister, Lord. We acknowledge we can't make it without you. Those over the airwaves. Sin has separated us from thee. But we come acknowledging that we have sinned against thee in word, thought, deeds. In some things that we have done, some that we have left undone. So he asks you to wash us in thy blood. Cleanse us. Help us to be a living sanctuary that holds your presence. We come against every strong man that want to take hold upon our temple. Satan, the Lord Jesus, rebuke you. Rebuke you from this temple. Rebuke you from our house. Rebuke you from our living epistle. Rebuke you from our gathering place. Satan, the Lord Jesus, rebuke you. We declare we are called. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone we declare we are the church upon which the rock is built and the gates of hell shall not prevail strengthen us out of Zion Lord help us to walk holy to be holy to please you moment by moment not just on a Sunday morning but every moment, Lord, give us this attitude of gratitude. Looking always for the coming of the Son of Man. Help us, God Almighty, that when we get up to speak, when we get up to do actions, whatever it is, let us examine ourselves. Is the Lord pleased? Is the Lord satisfied? Hey, God Almighty. For we know that you are not really just Lord. But you seek people for a relationship. For behold the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshippers shall worship in spirit 
and in truth we thank you lord for not giving up on us we thank you lord for he helping us to make our wrongs right we thank you lord for having mercy upon us so that we'll not experience judgment help us god almighty to make the opportune make the most of this mercy that you've extended knowing that there's coming a day when there'll be no more mercy help us to recommit ourselves to you ah ah god almighty help lord for the days are evil the days are short oh help us not to depart from the faith but help us to hold on to that which first we believe help us to be rooted and grounded in you help us to produce much fruit and that our fruit might remain somebody say in jesus name you're here at this altar today you're not yet saved but you say you know what i want to try jesus because i have only one soul i want to try him today if you're a backslider we want to give you the opportunity because when the books are open if you choose to accept him or to deny him today it will be in the book and everything that you do is written let every man examine himself will you trust him with your heart today will you surrender today will you repent will you turn if my people who are called by my name shall number one humble themselves number two pray number three turn oh many times we humble ourselves many times we pray but we have not turned turn in a different direction today god is calling you to a higher place you're not your own you belong to jesus you're not your own you belong to the king may god bless you may he keep you may he cause his face to shine upon you may he lift up the light of his countenance upon you may he give you his peace i declare today is a turning point in your life your life will never be the same again never the same again if you're used to joke around with your salvation you recognize the seriousness jesus heaven is real but hell is also real jesus and we have to spend eternity somewhere where do you choose to spend your eternity it is based upon your actions on a daily basis based upon your thoughts on a daily basis you are the one who decide where you spend eternity do we have any at this altar who want to commit their hearts to the lord today we give you the opportunity hallelujah the bible said the goodness of god leads to repentance and knowing the terror of god we persuade men to come we want to persuade you come 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 to him today god bless you this is your church keep on coming to your church this is a place not only for christians but for everybody this is a place where god speak to all nations declaring the manifold wisdom of god declaring his will and his way invite everybody you know come to this house where god can speak to us Today we have to